How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Rewrite Zero uh, Plus. Zero? What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what that happened there. I think my brain is melting, so let's just jump right into it. So last time, we were finally able to meet the Witch of the Academy, who turned out to be an awesome gamer. Uh, and pretty much, she's got a really fun sense of humor, because she's very sarcastic, which I really loved. But uh, she also kind of gave us some help, including she gave us some talismans that were cut out like little people. And one of them appeared to us in a dream, offered up her life to sac to protect us. So when we woke up in the morning, we'd actually had a full night's sleep. We felt a lot better. But what the, one of the three talismans was found, like, ripped to shreds. So, like, it's almost like it actually protected us. And that was really interesting. Because, again, it's like, based on, like, the way she was behaving, it almost felt like she was kind of just memeing it up a bit. You know, like, kind of like saying she was a witch, but mostly just kind of whatever. But... Those talismans seem to actually be a real thing. So I'm curious when we meet with her after school today, like, what's she gonna say about that? Is she going to be surprised? Is this, is she going to be? Is this something that she expected, or is she gonna act like it shouldn't have actually defended us in any way? Like it was just scraps of paper to her. That would be the funniest of the three. But regardless of that, I'm curious to see how this is gonna play out. So let us see what we get into today. So let's get started. All for today. I have to go report to the club. I've never attended one in my life, actually. Uh, in other words, this will be my first time attending a club meeting. My heart starts racing. This kind of feeling isn't too bad. Once in a while. All right, let's go. The occult club. This is going to be a strange place. Uh, excuse me. Didn't know we were Jar Jar Binks today. Hey, Akane. Hi. I look around the room. I was wondering if there were any other members, actually. Not a single one? Almost fitting, if you think about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you need at least three members to establish a society or whatever. If I remember that being one of our school rules. No, you got a point there. Though I'm starting to sense almost like a nepotism going on. If anything else, Akade has the smug look down pat. Like, look at that. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, let's capture that look. I mean, look at that. She's uh, just, just dripping with judgment. <laughs> Takes only a single glance to tell this place isn't normal. The question I have to I have is how this how she got the school to allow it, uh, this at all. There's no way she's just renovated a whole room without official permission. Seriously, who on earth is this woman? Okay, so are they made up people or people who you got to sign up who were secretly just wanted to be part of the go home club? None of them actually attend, almost as though they're ghosts. So not good. So your ghost club solves ghost troubles with its ghost members. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, highly disturbing. I think one of my one of your little spirit Shinigami whatever died. Well, the end result was pretty bittersweet. I tell her about last night, and then I show her the shreds of paper that used to be the Shikigami. So, Kikime ga hatta no. Hmm. Yeah, these things are the real deal. I can't contain my excitement. I've proven the existence of an exorcist abilities. I wouldn't have been surprised to see Shikigami becoming a big fad one day. You made them yourself, didn't you? What? <sighs> I mean, this is kind of what I thought might happen, but for some reason it's depressing. What? You know what? I understand. I'm not sure if I like you as much. So if they had happened to be fake, I shudder. I'm walking on a tightrope here. She was such a nice girl, and look what happened to her for trying to protect me. Do 
本人に代わって呪いを引き受けてくれるということになるのかしら。Yeah, and they die. なら3枚あったからあと2日はゆっくり休めるんじゃなくて I see. So that doesn't sound like a long term solution. 心配しないでも2日もあるなら考えておくわよ。I freaking hope so. 怪しいアイテムならいくらでもあるのだし。I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What did you just say? 解決したも同然よ。How reassuring! I'm sure glad I came here! 報告は欠かさぬこと。Aye, aye, Mon Capitan. By the way, what kind of activity does the Occult Research Society usually partake in? Akane gives me an exasperated look. Stay n i a y o Katsudo da nante. Oh, he's like, but I wanted to be a part of a club. <laughs> but you've got a club room here. Shishitsuyo. That's, uh, ridiculous. Hitotsu it de okua. Matsu, kono bushitsu no koto da kedo. Midari ni hito ni hanasa nai koto. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be inconvenient. The club room's a secret. Got it. Oki na koi de wa ie nai kedo. Kono bushitsu. あまり綺麗な経緯で用意されたものじゃないのよ。Okay. だから、ね。Oh, lovely, lovely. I see. You got it through your connections, understood. I'd expect nothing less from you. そうそう。教育委員会や PTA などの有力組織と縁やから。Yeah, there's a level of nepotism here. で、何を言わせるの？舐めているの？お前。Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Sorry, I'm pretty sure you dug your own hole there. In any case, I find it all a little hard to believe. It couldn't have been easy to make a government institution like a school just let you do as you please. I disagree, actually. If you pull your cards, play your cards right, you can actually really get away with some shenanigans with the school. I don't know, well, maybe I had a unique school situation, but、um, high school me really kind of got away with practically murder. Uh, for no real reason other than the fact that people liked me and I just didn't cause any trouble.、Um, it helped that I was part of the school newspaper, but frankly, my teachers also were pretty content with me as long as I was doing my homework. They just were fine. So, like, there were many times where like, I just felt like leaving early and I just go to the teacher and say, like, hey, I either got this done or like, hey, I got to work for the school newspaper. Do you mind if I leave? And they're like, sure. And they just let me leave.、Um, my senior year in high school, especially, I swear I probably spent like a third of like, All class time, not in class, but like with permission.、Um, I also had teachers who just, they just, they were just really chill with me. I, I wasn't like a like a teacher's pet per se. Like I didn't like brown nose or anything. I just didn't cause any trouble and I tended to be able to do my work and help out other students and not cause issues. And so, When I'd ask for favors or simply ask if I could leave, like, it's like amazing how many teachers were fine with me leaving early if I just asked.、Um, again, being part of the school newspaper、uh, might have given me extra leeway than other people, but at the same time, they never would follow through or, or like they didn't care if I was saying I was on school, school newspaper business or not. They'd just be like, okay, yep, see ya. And I'd just go out and do whatever I wanted, really. Heck, there weren't even school, like, school days I just kind of skipped altogether for. No other reason, and just was fine with it. Like, didn't have to like, like convince my parents to give me time off or anything. I just kind of was like, I'm not going to be at school today. And they're like, okay. Like, no one ever gave me any trouble about that kind of stuff. I was able to kind of just do whatever I wanted. So, like, it does sound interesting though, because, like, especially traditionally, Japan schools seem to be very,、um, A lot more strict. I mean, like, they have like uniforms, and I'm sure that there's a lot of protocol and a lot of like restrictiveness that's a, like more heavily enforced than in American schools. So, that also could be a big reason why it's not as big a deal for me and it in coming across as a bigger deal in the game like this. But it's just fun to be like, I don't know. I enjoyed my time in high school. I definitely think I could have like enjoyed it more if I'd been more adventurous and more. Uh, what do you say? More willing to be creative with my time and like more trusting in my own abilities and my own interests rather than constantly focused on what other people thought of me. And so, like, we get this, but regardless of that, I still think I enjoyed myself at high school and like got to be able to do a lot of really fun stuff that didn't necessarily fall in line with everything else. I also really enjoyed how,、uh, like, I got elected to be like a class representative. I didn't even try. 
I, they just asked, like, would anyone be willing to represent our class? And, like, I raised my hand. I was just like, I'd be willing. And somebody else raised their hand. They said they really were interested. So the class had a vote, and I won. <laughs> so I was like, okay. That let me skip classes a lot, too. But I had to go sit in boring meetings. So did I really win? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> don't tell me you used magic. Akane only smiles meaningfully. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's not. Black magic? Like fireball? It's not black magic, that's fire magic or red magic. What about thunder? Okay, so he's, he's, he's actually making reference specifically to like Final Fantasy, which black mages did use fire, thunder, like aggressive spells. <laughs> she sounds like an old lady when she says that. Right. I'm skeptical, but let's go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So, black magic is bribery slash um, blackmail. Blackmail, black magic. There you go. Right, you know, some of his kinks, and then next thing you know, you kind of get whatever you want. Right, that's interesting. God, that's evil. That sure sounds like real magic. Right. What? No, that's illegal. Super illegal. That, but you should be reporting that. Truly the power of the stars. ある市議会議員が特定企業に便宜を図っていたとする。私がその情報をもとに魔術的に一本の電話をかける。Alright, Akare, when you're done here, you need to get into politics. Actually, no, maybe don't. I'd be kind of terrified of what she could do in politics if she's already this, like, adept at, like, pulling strings and, like, asking favors and manipulating literally everybody to doing whatever she wants. If she were actually in charge of a country, like, that could be terrifying. I guess that'd be alchemy. Right. I see you in a new light, that's for sure. So you're basically saying magic is just an illusion. It looks supernatural, but it isn't your but it isn't once you explain how it works basically. Alistair Crowley. That does sound familiar. Why have I, where have I heard that? No, but I imagine they were magicians. Okay. I was like, I could have... I was like, that name sounded familiar. Hmm. And she's got kind of a good point there. She's like, magic is simply about making your will manifest into the world. And like the means of doing so don't necessarily have to be mystical. They just have to be something that people would find awe-inspiring or like they unable to, to see the connection between the two. And so like if if the sleight of hand of a magician playing with a deck of cards to make you think that they magically can make cards appear where they need to, or if you magically find information that you can then use to get what you want when nobody else should be in your position should be able to get it, you could say those are the same thing. It's an illusion of what's really happening, a sleight of hand, to make it appear as if things are happening organically without any real input, almost as if it's magic. So she's essentially saying sleight of hand isn't limited to your hand. Sleight of hand is also political, um, social, 
economical, like all of that. There's a sleight of hand in any aspect of life, and anyone who can manipulate that skillfully should be called a magician. I like that. That's actually really, that's kind of deep, actually. Yeah, I, caused by your will alone. Like, simply, like, like by being able to, like, accomplish tasks that you, phys like, normally couldn't do yourself, but being able to bring them about without needing to rely on others, but, like, just on your own. Another way of looking at the magic. So it's all just a matter of perspective. So, Okay. Changes in one's consciousness, that sounds more like hypnosis or psychology. Hmm. Okay. So being able to harness your own like determination to create something that you want and making it like come true is also a kind of magic. I don't know. So it kind of sounds forced to me, to be honest. I don't know if I agree with Kotoru. I think it's actually a pretty, pretty well-reasoned argument that she's putting out. Granted, she also blatantly uses the guise of the mystical arts to her own, like, pleasure. But, you know, the reality is more based on something that I do get behind. やがては精神論と和解して交渉な意味付けを重ねるか再決体験に逃避せざるを得ないのはこうしたことねgotcha in that case what would that mean for my ex experiences in your shikigami そうね環境ホルモン説なんていかが oh uh, environmental and doctrine disruptors I, what environmental what 生態に影響を及ぼす物質は <laughs> Maybe. But the problem is, I've been in the same house for years and it's only recently started. So you're saying I got high on asbestos and went on a couple bad trips? <laughs> Her lips curl into a bewitching smile. Huh. So you continue snickering to herself. Don't tell me you're saying that all cult events can be explained with science or something. I mean, she's got a point, except for the fact that we have blatant evidence that's not entirely true. I don't think my situation is like that, though. けれどその代わりお前を私の観察対象とさせてもらうわ。うん。What's so she wants to see if we'll change the world or just ourselves. Huh? What? Ah, interesting. I'm not sure I'm following. She wants to know if you're somebody who can shape the world around you, like she does. Like, she shapes the world around her. Um, it's kind of terrifying, her being said that she can. So she's saying, like, are you the person who focuses just on yourself and making yourself better, stronger, faster? Or are you ability, do you have the ability to shape your reality around you and make things kind of fall into place by skill, determination, luck, all of it? Nice. Interesting. Huh? I have no idea what she's babbling about. If you say so. Anyway, I'll see how this occult research society operates. Frankly, though, that's a good place for an occult research group to be is skeptical. Like, 
If you're somebody who just gets caught up in believing everything you potentially see and don't try and actually follow through with it, you're going to get sucked into a whole bunch of just, you know, dead ends rather than actually finding answers. Man, I kind of want to start an occult research club now because I'm very skeptical of these things, but I've been curious to find out. Like, I'm the kind of person, I've genuinely said this before, I keep asking, like, I've asked my friends, I say, like, look, would you ever be willing to go camping all night in a graveyard, like an old graveyard with me? A lot of them are saying, no, absolutely not. That sounds terrible. But, like, I genuinely want to do that. I want to go, I don't know, maybe it sounds like tempting fate, but the thing is, it's like, I don't believe in ghosts. Like, I kind of almost wish they were real, but I'm like, 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 I don't think they are at all. Like, I don't think camp out in a graveyard is any, like, stranger than camping out in your backyard. I mean, both places are likely have human remains nearby. It's just that the graveyard is where we know we put them, and your backyard is just where you don't know about it. Like, it's just kind of how things, like, human nature and human history has been long enough. Like, you can't think that, like, there's just nothing going on around you. And so, like, I don't think it really matters. Part of me just curious to see if it'd be, it, it have any interesting experiences if you did something like that. But nobody will take me up on that. <laughs> I think it'd be so fun to do, like, a ghost hunter type of experience and, like, really try and get to the nitty gritty about whether or not a place is haunted. Being a skeptic, obviously, I don't think it'd make great TV because I mostly just kind of probably nothing would happen because I imagine those shows try and ham it up to make the show interesting but part of me has always been kind of curious and willing to go for it yes うん。単に消滅寸前の研究会があったから申し受けただけ。あ、オッケー、そういうかなりハイジャックテッド。元々のここは真っ当な you come off more like your auntie occult of anything. So you Interesting. Akane the witch elegantly places her elbows on the table and rests her chin on the back of her hands. Right. Contemplate by playing video games. Hey, that year. So, Stamonode, Henkako, Kyokosta, Wakadakara. Sakino Hanashkara Sreba, Nipani Majits, or Jisen Stadu, no, they are Yeah, absolutely. You're just saying whatever you want at this point. Who would have thought the president of the Occult Research Society would turn out to be a skeptic? Kaigi Tikito Yuri. Gotcha. But it still doesn't explain what's been happening to us, especially with our superpowers. Still, you're saying that our current concept of a cult, ghosts, and everything else on the spectrum is all bullcrap, right? Okay. So, what happens if I find out these things actually do exist and aren't just tricks of your mind or whatever? <laughs> that doesn't make that makes even less sense. Remind me to never that make never make bets with you. In any case, my ghosts are real. I'm not messing around. But but they are Wasn't currently playing tricks on my eyes, okay? Nara that's terrifying. My room's on the second floor. Uh, I get the feeling Akane is too bullheaded for her own good. Are you sure you could solve my problem? Do you even know what kind of help I actually need? Don't make it sound like I'm a mental case. I was just talking about those. I guess so? Ah, you bangumidekonkyomunaku. Yeah, she doesn't like people who are toting the line just to be on TV. Ugh. I actually agree with her on that point. But from her perspective, it probably looks like I just just like them. I look I probably look just like them.
Murdered by words right here. 知っていて子供の平均知能指数が1高くなるとそう逆にアホが増えると教育費はかさむようになるのね。Dang. Well, sorry for being stupid. No matter what she says, I can't imagine the supernatural phenomena that s o l t o n me being a mere illusion. No. Unfortunately, we have a little too much, like, pretty solid evidence. No, wait. But then out of nowhere, it all clicks in my head. Okay, let's investigate. We're in the occult research society. You are a witch. I'm someone who's experienced, experienced a supernatural phenomenon. We've got the stage, the detective, and even our own Watson. She makes a tired expression. So you know, a s k i j a n a i w a k e r e d o So, ne. Oh, my g a y e r i t a i k o t o g a r n a r a k a t e n y a r e b a y a l right, let's go to my house. Jogan k u r a i b a s t e a g e t e Your confidence never wavers, huh? You've got, I don't believe this crap written all over your face. So, n a m o n o a s i n k o n i c h i k a i i o b a s k i m o n o m i k a k u n i h i k o b u t a i w a j i t z a i s u r e d e s h o g a Sono s h o t a i w a Gotcha. So she's like, this, they, like, she's admitted, she's like, there are things we can't explain. But the explanations for the unexplained are very unlikely to be the real reason. And she's like, so she's like, she's like, to completely disregard the fact that they could exist would be foolish because that just kind of paints you into a corner. But being skeptical also means that, like, you know, it's Occam's razor. Like, the most simple answer is, tends to be the, the correct one. So, like, she's gonna think about more practical reasons and consider them to be more likely than supernatural ones. Superpowers do exist, though. Whoops, might have said that with a bit too much confidence. Akira gives me a disappointed look. Hey, you're free to think whatever you want about me. But I know they exist. Ah, so? I'll bring you someone who will turn the water they pour into, the, into a hat to a beautiful, ah, beautiful pigeons right before your eyes, okay? How about someone who can multiply the color the colored balls they hold between their fingers? Ah, I keep just stop clicking the wrong thing! How about making a sexy babe fly in the air without ever touching her? I'll even show you if she's not suspended by wires or anything by putting her through a hula hoop before having her levitate. Ugh. No, superpowers do exist though, seriously.、Uh, that I know with absolute certainty. What? No. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you something. Superpowers or ghosts or anything else, I'm sure there's something. How can I curl her lip into a villainous smirk? Essentially, a dollar. <laughs> That's all? That's bad enough to kill all my motivation from the start. Three dollars. Why are you hesitating when bringing up sums of that tiny? Aren't you supposed to be rich? Rather than money, I'd just like you to help me solve my problem. Yes. If it really turns out to have just been a curtain or something, I'll become your guinea pig, a bug, or whatever you want. But if I succeed in proving ghosts, superpowers, or aliens to you, yeah. Let me. Let me touch your boobs. <laughs> She's like, Are you serious? Akane's eyes narrow in reproachful slits as she pulls the pin from a key holder she took out of her pocket. A shrill alarm of her face in the room. <laughs> Pervert. A molester. Police, police. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Uh, turn that thing off! I was kidding, I was just a joke! Excuse me. I snitched the buzzer off out of her hands and stomp on it with all my might. The sound stops. <sighs> really hope no one heard that. I fell, I fell to my knees. He did that on purpose. He told me to name my demands, so. 
Oh. I seriously thought my heart was gonna burst. Huh? I get why she's this confident, but I have a feeling she's gonna eat her words later. <laughs> Seriously? But that would mean we'd be dating. You can only touch the boobs of someone you're dating. He has oddly, like, prominent, like, what do you call it? Morals <laughs> for someone who just pulled that uh, request out of his hat. Can you imagine? <laughs> I was watching Lord of the Rings recently. Can you imagine like, going down the line of the fellowship and, like, Galadriel's giving out gifts and she gets the Gimli? She's like, what would a dwarf ask of the elves? And, instead of asking for her hair, he's like, can I just touch your boobs? <laughs> He would be dead on the spot. <laughs> we can always break up if it doesn't work out. You can't always tell if love's before uh, if it's love before actually spending time together. Exactly. How can I shift her gaze to the questionnaire in her hands with a somewhat dumbfounded expression on her face? Hmm. What? Alright, well, we got a goal. A stupid one, but a goal! <laughs> Aww, there she is. Oh, gosh. Morning arrives. It doesn't seem like anything happened to me overnight, just like yesterday. However, with my mind full of questions and doubts, I can't exactly say it was a pleasant night's sleep. Well, at least nothing bad happened. I figured I might as well put the thoughts on my mind and head to school like usual. What about the Shikigami? Yo, Otari! They say Naples, uh, they say see Naples and die, but it's not like seeing Naples is what kills you, you know? It'd be pretty awful if the saying was you'll die if you see Naples, huh? Actually, we just had these random conversations with her. <laughs> I brought the convenience store box lunch. It doesn't hurt to relax in the classroom every once in a while. Box lunches are great in that they eliminate the need to go to the cafeteria and stand in line. Hey, hey Lucia? Yeah, have you forgiven me yet? Because that was... I, I have to even admit, it was pretty egregious what we did last time. Huh? Did our class representative bring her own lunch today, too? Spot her rummaging through her bag with a typically brisk expression on her face. Well then, where should I eat? Hmm. Classroom or outside? If we go outside, I imagine we'll meet, like, the little miss. The little sister. The classroom might be more interesting. There's no need to leave just to have lunch. Oh, hey, Kotori! Yeah, I wasn't planning on it, but... I saw this when I was in the convenience store, and I just couldn't resist. Yes, yes! Huh? You sure? Hmm. Aww. Well, that's what better than expected. Looks like class rep's having her lunch here, too. Oh, that's cool. Why?! I don't know why I've been clicking the wrong button! I don't know what's wrong with me. I think I'm going crazy! It's the curse. The curse has been back. It used to happen all the time when I played Fata Morgana. I had this curse. I would have just kept right-clicking in the middle of my playthroughs for no reason, and it's happening again. I, that's definitely a pretty nice perk to have someone who can already cook when they're not even like in high school, out of high school yet. Oh, I see. I see. Funny enough, like I've been. Um, we have dietary restrictions in our home. Like, uh, uh, my wife specifically has discovered that she has intolerances to some foods. She's probably got something similar to, like, celiac. Like, we're, like, 90% sure she's got celiac disease. They just haven't done a perfect confirmation yet, but even the doctors are like, yeah, just follow a celiac diet. That means no gluten whatsoever. And even tough, like, high FODMAP type foods like Brussels sprouts can give her like digestive issues. So we've learned, we've had to learn how to cook a lot at home because we can't just go out to eat most places. A lot of places that even claim to be gluten-free 
still might have like like micro contamination, which can still give her stomach issues. One of the benefits of this is I've actually becoming decent at baking and not just baking, like baking gluten-free options, vegan options. Like I, I apparently like I made a batch of cookies for uh, like a local event and uh, my wife said that like there were people who came up to her afterwards asking her what the recipe was because they assumed she made them and was asking like how, like those were amazing like how did you make that and she happily said that not only was it me that made them but that they were gluten free and they had no idea and so like like I feel like inadvertently I've actually become pretty decent at baking <laughs> which is like really random because I never like wanted to be a baker but like I've got a good instinct for it now and I tend to be a lot more on point than off point. And I've been trying more complex uh, recipes. Like I made um, pumpkin bread that was fantastic this season for like Thanksgiving, Christmas time. So yeah, it's kind of fun to be able to get involved in that kind of stuff. Class rep eats her lunch like she's still in the middle of class. Her back is straight as an arrow. Her hands move with mechanical precision. On the other hand, everyone else moves to their desks together and enjoys their own meals in a laid back and cheerful manner. I think I know what we're gonna be doing I don't think it's gonna go over well, but come on, we gotta at least try, right? Well, I have nothing to say as long as she's having fun. I steal a quick glance at the contents of her lunchbox. Oh, Coltery wasn't kidding. That thing's as colorful as a rainbow. Does she really make all that food by herself? That's pretty incredible. Oh, Kotori, I didn't know you swung that way. I thought you were a dateable route, but maybe you're not. Maybe you're, maybe, uh, maybe you swing for the other team. That'd be kind of fun. You don't sound like you're planning to be one yourself. <laughs> Your own lunchboxes are incredible, though. The madam's personality really comes through. Perfection with no room for compromise. The ultra, ultra, the ultra tight arrangement of those meatballs is worthy of praise in particular. Indeed, if you took a single glance at my lunchbox, you could have mistaken it for an average pol uh, Pollock Roll lunch, but it's red. Way redder than it should be. Oh, did we get the spicy one? On the label it says, extra spicy, a tour of hell. Fetch. And the line between below is even more terrifying. The true terror will only descend upon you tomorrow. No recommended for anyone with pre-existing conditions. <laughs> oh no! That means the second round of flavor tasting is the worst. Why did we buy this? I might. Right? Well, you men are sad creatures and cannot resist the allure of risking their lives even during a quiet and peaceful lunch break. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I haven't fallen as low as I need the counseling from you. It is. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't really buy this lunch for myself. I simply remembered it when I was, uh, I was out of pencil lead on my way to school and dropped by to a nearby convenience store to refurbish my supply. But then I spotted this dangerous looking super spicy lunch for sale. I instantly knew that fate would brought us together. I didn't buy it to eat. I bought it to feed. I don't eat of course not. Who knows what the madam would do to me if anything happened to you. And actually, that's not everything I brought today. What? Why? I found it in the same store. It's a super spicy pepper sauce. Apparently, a single drop of it's enough to turn a whole bathtub full of water to a super spicy soup, or so the label said anyway. Why would you do that? That sounds like a bath from hell. Also, it's funny because, like, I was talking about food again. I've actually been upping my spice palette. I mentioned that before. Like, I just suddenly been slowly working my way up the Scoville scale. I've recently been able to, like, use sauces that use, like, the Reaper and Ghost Pepper and everything. It's still pretty powerful, and they don't use a ton of it, but, like, I now can eat pretty spicy stuff, which I'm actually looking forward to being able to go, like, traveling into, like, Japan or Thailand or China and have some real, like, Asian spice, proper Asian spice, and not be, like, knocked flat by it. <laughs> yeah, it's written on here. You can use it for that, too. Wouldn't it make you lose weight because you'd feel so sick you wouldn't eat? Oh, you want to try this some now? Makes sense. The spicy stuff some of the fr uh, fishiest merchandise I've found at a convenience store. Feels like there's a lot of other things in there with warning labels like this. 
The pencil that I bought there isn't going to explode on me, is it? For starters, I'll take out all these jalapeno peppers, since they just look like the spiciest thing in the box. Oh, bro, those are the spiciest thing in the box. That thing's not too spicy. Like, you can eat jalapeno poppers just boom. Like, they're not bad at all. But he probably just doesn't know enough about spice to realize that those are probably the tamest thing in a spice box. I agree. <laughs> Jalapeno poppers are basically deep-fried jalapenos with extra stuff inside. I've heard they're practically good with- particularly good with cheese. Isn't everything. But this one's empty, so I'll just add some miso. Miso no? Wafuda. No, this is where I'll be using the pepper sauce. Yeah, that is gonna give it quite a kick. I pack it full of the hellish sauce. Can't really call it a deep fried jalapeno anymore. It's become a genuine chemical weapon. <laughs> I tried tasting a drop of this, and it was even worse than the level 17 curry from yesterday. Might prove lethal to an average person, but we'll see if it'll be enough to make Konohana Lucia admit that it's spicy. I'm coming more convinced that she either doesn't have a sense of taste or like there's something else going on that makes her like not actually taste the food that she has because like it's getting to the point where it's pretty clear that she should at least be able to recognize like that's the thing like a parfait that's spicy even if you can handle the spice you should be able to tell it doesn't taste right because you've had other parfaits. Yet she ate it and didn't recognize at all that anything was odd. I think the only odd thing was how she saw everyone acting around her. So there's something else going on there. Because it's not just like, oh, she can handle spice. She doesn't even know what spices taste like, apparently. It's something very strange. I knew people would start talking. But those aren't just rumors. It's all true. I've already tested it twice. Both times the results shattered the very foundation of my common sense. Not to mention I barely escaped with my life both times. Yeah, I really think he needs to not do that. Oh no. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's a misunderstanding. To be specific, it was of vital importance to promptly measure the substance remaining on her plate for my research. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I know it's weird. <laughs> You really don't need to do that. Anyway, now's your time to shine, Kotori. No, you just need to give it to her. That's not what I mean. She won't be as wary of you as she is of me. Look, what I need you to do is very simple. Whisper, whisper, whisper. If I have to describe how class rep lo uh, looks as she eats her lunch. She's eating with the utmost precision and seriousness, all in a complete silence. It looks almost like she's jotting down notes from the blackboard to her notebook to use uh, using her chopsticks. That lavish lunch couldn't possibly be happier eating be happier couldn't be happy being eaten that way. I observe Kanabe Kotori, my assassin, drawing closer to her. I like how she's actually going along with this. Hmm. <laughs> <笑>あのね、その、<笑> Yeah, again, that almost makes me think that she really has some kind of no ability to like taste or whatever because then she focuses on the aesthetic, like appearances. She sits up perfectly straight, she has perfect form, and her lunch looks immaculate. But it might taste terrible because she doesn't know what, like, if you can't taste food as you're cooking it, you're never going to be able to get the balance of flavors right. So unless she's like making things like perfectly following a recipe, her lunch might look immaculate and taste horrifically terrible. Yeah, I like how she's trying to be like cool and nonchalant in the most salant way. 
Kotori gives me a thumbs up as she laughs awkwardly, <laughs> indicating that she has the situation under control. Oh gosh. Gosh, she's terrible at lying, though I suppose that's not really a bad thing, is it? My strategy is simple. First, Kotori has to utilize her position as a woman to insinuate herself into Lucia's circle of friends, and then she has to naturally suggest partaking in the modern schoolgirl ritual of a food exchange. And finally, plant my red chemical weapon, the Red Dead Mad Jalapeno RX-45, into the enemy base. If I had brought it over myself, Class Rep would have most likely grown suspicious and turned it down, but she has no reason to keep her guard up around Kotori. And even if the current plan ends in a resounding success, with Class Rep screaming in furious agony, all the blame will fall on Kotori anyway. Oh, come on! All I have to do is play dumb and I'll be off the hook. Dang, it's so good, this whole behind-the-scenes mastermind thing. <laughs> Hmm. It's still, like, it's so, it's so, I don't want to say it's suspicious, that's the wrong word for this, but it's so, like, poignant. Like, it's been battering us over the head that she doesn't know how things taste. There's got to be something to that. Hmm, they didn't expect her to refuse. Change of plan. You don't need to exchange it with anything. Just tell her it's a gesture of friendship or whatever. Wait. Ah! Oh, crap! I've got nothing to do with it. I was just passing by. Class Rep, her face deep crimson color, causes the room to, uh, co crosses the room to my desk with a heavy, menacing stomps. <laughs> no, the sad thing is we're not actually trying to harass her, but she probably feels like it. No, not at all. I'm just curious, that's all. You could say I'm quite awed by your very existence. Oh, thanks, Kotori. Grateful for Kotori's quick wit, I decided to use the opportunity to my advantage. If I don't get out of this quick, I'll probably end up tasting the ceiling of the classroom, too. Well, I mean, I caused you a lot of trouble the other day, right? It was all misunderstanding, to be honest, but... We could avoid a lot of problems if we're honest, but I have a feeling we're not going to be. I can hear the girls in the class whispering amongst themselves. No, no way! There were the rumors about Tadoji Richard after all. Really, is the boy who licked up a girl's leftovers level two? I'm getting chills. Whisper. I'm sorry. I'm seriously sorry. Please forgive me. How could you say that while blushing and on the verge of tears in front of all these people? I'm seriously running out of lives at this point, so please. Kotori is the best ever. Crap. I think. She's so in our corner. I love it. これのために、わざわざ寄り道してまで買ってきてくれたんだよ。委員長と仲直りするために。Oh, went from like one of the worst diplomats I've ever seen to like one of the best ones. そ、そうなのか。それは本当か。天王寺小太郎。Wow, I appreciate Kotori's help, but this is starting to make me feel bad. Well, I guess it's something like that, yeah. I got it too embarrassed, so I had Kotori bring it to you instead. Sorry for being so weird and roundabout. <laughs> How do you like this, Konohana Lucia? You're not the only one who can blush and cry. With that, she can't possibly turn me down. Direct apologies are extra effective on those governed by the holy element, after all. Lucia lowers her flushed face, most likely wondering where to direct her anger. Dang it! It's not what you think! <laughs> you fool! 
Stop it, classroom. Stop it, please. Like, you're strangling me. I'm gonna die. Seriously. Like, ah. what, what's that all about? It's, it's, just, it's all clear now. To know she's actually in love with our class rep. Ah, I see. So that's why he keeps bugging her. Licking her plate, stealing her flute, sniff, sniffing her shoes with all the all ex inexperienced expressions of love. That explains everything. Where did the sniffing of shoes come in? Stop! You're gonna crush my throat for real! Ah, there's a go my neck! God, what is she doing with us? Class rep, her face scarlet mask of anger and humiliation, pulls me out into the corridor. She drags me along the floor until we're far enough away the classroom's out of sight. <sighs> You've got quite a grip, class rep. I bet you could crush an apple with one hand if you tried. Aw, she's actually pretty reasonable. Roger that. I appreciate it. I had no inten ill intention, I swear. You could say that the way you ate positively captivated my heart, and I couldn't help but try to prank you a little. Oh crap, did I actually fan the flames again? I really have to be more careful what I say. Yeah, that sounds like a deal. So, we cool now? うん。それでいい。教室に戻ったら元通りの普通の関係だぞ。ちょっかい出すとかそういうのはもうなしだ。分かったな。Yeah, and you don't need to blush and tremble all the time either. I think that's what mainly giving everyone the wrong idea here. なんだと? Hey, 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 we're back to normal, right? Soothe thy fury, calm down. It's okay. Cuz telling people to calm down always works. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Wait. I need to hear that again. <laughs> she like growled. Gosh <laughs> darn it. Looks like she's starting to cool down a little. Her grip on my collar finally loosens. The collar had gotten pulled out of shape through that whole exercise. Her gaze down. She, she, her, her eyes gaze down on it. Oh, uh, did it go dirty? Uh, I don't think dirty is how I would describe it. I mean, you wore gloves and everything. It doesn't even have your fingertip prints on it. She suddenly becomes so modest, I almost wonder if she's the same girl who was punching me repeatedly only yesterday. Definitely not the attitude you expect from the class of, class's iron fist of justice. Is that the reason she brought me to the corridor with nobody else around? Well, it's more than enough for me to learn that she has a cute side to her. Don't worry about it. Yoshino messes up my shirt every time I try and talk to him anyway. And for a guy, it's actually pretty cool to have your uniform a little crooked. <sighs> for me, my shirt is hardly the same galaxy as the concept of dirty. But for a clean freak like our class rep, it might be pretty hard to ignore. For a moment, I wonder if I should let her have her way, but that would probably lead to more misunderstanding, so... I don't want to get my teeth knocked out and end up embarrassing her again. Anyway... I guess that's it. We're back to how we used to be. Oh. Uh -huh. What? さっきはその。お前のお金のこと不潔とか言って悪かった。お前が仲直りのためにわざわざ持ってきてくれたのに。はわっおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
We return to the classroom as though nothing happened. My collar looks like a mess, so everyone assumes I got beating. I think that should at least eliminate any other weird rumors. Lunch break's almost over. Most students are more concerned about heading to the science classroom before the bell than making fun of us. I return alive. I think so. よかったね。怪しいコンビニに寄り道した会があったね。ははは。仲直りの印に小太郎くんも院長のおかず一つもらったら交換した方がより仲直りって感じがするよね。いや、everything we really should have exchanged food if we we're going to try and patch things up. Besides, I'm quite curious about how her lunch actually tastes. It makes me feel bad for offering a jalapeno bomb in exchange for something that delicious looking, though. Class rep seems to be somewhat happy about my proposal, but she closes her eyes and shakes her head slightly. <laughs> so there's something. I see. Then I'll be looking forward to it. Arigato. I end up being thanked for doing nothing. I kind of give up. It must be aligned with the holy element as well, since I find it hard to take kindness straight on like that. She smiles, seizes it with her chopsticks, and guides it to her mouth. The jalapeno popper I'd created to force the Queen of Spice to finally admit defeat. But I no longer want to see that happen. I can only pray that her ability to handle spicy food exceeds my wildest dreams. That said, a jalapeno isn't just something spicy. It could easily be classified as a murder weapon, but she'd truly be able to keep it down. That sounds wrong. How was it? You could spit it out if it's making you sick. I know you have your pride as a queen, but... I see why she's a lot of people's favorites now. What? Then, wait, do you mean... She does like spice, and she did taste the spicy. Okay. Arigato. I no longer have any idea what Koto is congratulating me for. However, I can't help but let out a sigh of relief, though I can't hide my astonishment either. No, I've gone beyond astonishment. I can only laugh. Dang, I've really got no choice but to give up. Even the title of Queen of Spice is beneath her. I have just witnessed the ascension of a goddess. The goddess of spice. I have no way of defeating a god, so it's time to admit defeat. Suddenly, the classroom door opens. Oi, Incho. Sumanga, just a ika. Hi, Sensei. Sumanga, kore de shitsure suru. Duty calls. Tsugi wa rikashitsu da zo. Okureru na. And with a with a stock line befitting a class representative everywhere, a class rep stands up and strides to the teacher waiting in the corridor. The bell signaling the end of lunch break reverberates throughout the room. All of our classmates promptly stand to begin heading to the science room. Hey, I only need a few seconds. Can't you wait? Hey! Kotori picks up her textbook and leaves the classroom as I hurry to clean up my lunchbox. What was that all about? How cold. My stomach rumbles. I guess I didn't eat the entire lunch break, huh? Oh, I've got this tour of hell, though. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I get so obsessed with defeating class ref, I forgot to eat anything myself. I try a bite of the ta uh, tamest looking piece of deep fried lotus root I can find and spit it out immediately. So all of the holes are filled with mustard. Oh gosh, that's not spicy. That's just disgusting. There's no way I could eat this thing. Got no time for this. Gotta hurry to the science room. Guess I'm not having lunch today. Jeez, I totally brought this on myself, huh? But as I retrieve my textbook and begin heading for the door, my attention is drawn to class rep's lunchbox still resting on her desk. She was making all sorts of excuses, but I feel like I have the right to a little taste of what she's been hiding in there. You make sure no one's here. I glance inside, but it's already empty. Dang it. Still, I can't contain my curiosity. She made it for herself. It has to be tasteless the way that she likes it. 
And she did mention it wasn't normal, it wasn't for normal tongues or whatever. Don't tell me she's eating super spicy food all the time. Sounds pretty possible, though. I've heard that the more you eat spicy food, the less effect it has on you. It's true. And she ate my jalapeno grenade like it was a delicious treat. Her ability to handle spicy food exceeds that of any other human I know. At this point, I'd honestly like her to take me as an apprentice. I wonder if I could conquer the cafeteria's level 10 curry if I underwent her training. That'd be pretty awesome. I could rub it in Yoshino's face. I pick up Classroom's empty lunchbox. It's empty, but the smell is yet to dissipate. Pretty sure there's just... I can tell how spicy it was if I just take a little sniff. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! No, don't! We just made up with her! Gosh darn my hand! This might give me a glimpse into the path that she took to build up that superhuman spice resistance. But as the lunchbox draws closer to my nose, I hear something. It's the sound of class rep dropping the class journal on the floor. I admit defeat. Can I call you master from now on? Oh, oh, oh my God. What the... We just undid so much work. No, wait a second. This time it's really misunderstanding. I'm innocent. Can I call Kotori to stand my, as my lawyer real quick? No, dead bodies don't need lawyers, I see. You're saying this is the end of Tonoji Kotoro? Well, I understand. Season title, The Boy Who Licks the Girls Leftovers Level 3. <sighs> We've earned it. <laughs> and with that, we will be ending for today. <laughs> what an awesome game this is. I really don't know which girl I'm going to be pursuing at this point. They're all pretty awesome. Like, they all have really, like, they're really... They've got multiple layers to them, and I'm guessing we've only scratched the surface of it, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm excited about all this. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you guys are having a good week as we get ready for the new year. Thank you so much. As you've probably seen, uh, the Patreon cast got released yesterday. So make sure you go and check it out. I talk about the games that I'm considering like going up to for the next year. And like, I'm going to be ending polls that are going to be like ending like on New Year's Day. Where we'll decide kind of like what the next games are going to be. So if you want to see and have a hand in what we cover uh, or in the next year for content... Let me know, because like this is your chance to have your say. But regardless of that, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm grateful to have each and every one of you. You guys are awesome. Here's the start of a brand new year, and let's keep enjoying our time with Rewrite Together. So until the next video, watch me. I'll see me next. I'll see you there.